Hey, Shazam 15 here. Okay, this week's film was originally going to be Johnny English, but due to the cinema being overlooked, it's Monte Carlo this week. My apologies, but yeah. Okay, so, what is Monte Carlo? Well, on the face of it, some might see it as a slightly more constructively concealed version of Robin Holiday. And although it is in the same vein, uh, according to the credits, actually based on a different book, so there we go. Uh, right. <clears throat> Let's see. Overall, this is a average chick flick. It's pretty much textbook. But it's still got some nice bits and pieces. We've got the stepsister who is quite stunning and that wiggle that jiggle wiggle is just mm -mm. I'm sorry I had to be a pick there um right what else is there well we have the polo is entertaining although admittedly it doesn't really matter with the polo as to how you do it because at the end of the day most people don't know how to play polo unless it's the water kind and even then most people are clueless I tried to play water polo once, my horse drowned. Sorry. Um, yeah, this film makes me full of bad jokes. It's that, that... Basically, the performances are fine. Catherine Tate, I wasn't expecting to appear, but she does, and she does quite good character. I'm getting the impression that maybe her character is supposed to be a bit married into Rich, not naturally rich anyway um spoil basic story spoil heiress swaps places with penniless well I say penniless with poor girl from Texas who was saved up for her entire high school career for her entire high school days to go to Paris she swaps places in Paris with an heiress who's supposed to be in Monte Carlo but decides to go to Mallorca leaving her hotel suite and furniture her hotel suite and suitcase is free. So the penniless girl gets to basically nick the trip. And the reason she can do this is because they look very much alike. And she can do a very bad British accent. Anyway. Uh, Monte Carlo itself is wonderful, you know, wonderful setting. It's a beautiful place. To be honest, I'm getting quite... I'm starting to understand why people like the south of France. I'd never got it before, but it is... It does look quite nice. Anyway, uh... What else is there, really? Yeah, there's polo, there's fireworks, there's... It's a generic chick flick overall. There's lots of girl bonding. There's boys that are quote-unquote cute. Uh, there is lots of cute girls if you're watching the chick flick with your girlfriend. You can nod off and just look at the pretty girls. The costumes are quite nice. And when I say the pretty girls, I mean the two older ones, not Selma, Selena Gomez, because that's a bit creepy. Uh, unless you're that age, or closer to that age than I am. Anyway, um, here it's quite good overall. I liked it. Well, I liked it well enough for what it is. It's a bit too textbook for my standards. It doesn't really jump out as brilliant. But I don't know if that's down to the script, down to the actors, down to the book. I don't know. It was definitely missing something. But, you know, it's good enough. If you're just wanting to pass a few hours, it's worth watching. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, um, have fun. Hopefully next week I will do Johnny English Reborn. Admittedly, the other option was Lion King, which I'm sure some of you would have actually liked. So I'll just do a quick one there, just to summarize. Um, bizarre Disney... F it's a enjoyable Disney family film where Disney does Hamlet by swapping 
the Danish for lions. That's about it. <laughs> Everyone goes on about the musical score, but to be honest, I don't really rate it that much. There's some enjoyable songs, but it's not the most standout thing in the film. If anything, the most standout thing is the comic double team of Timon and Pumba, but that's that. And, of course, you've got the hornbill that is played beautifully by Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's two film reviews in one, so that's value for money. Not that you're actually paying me, but still. <laughs> anyway, uh, TTFN, see you next week.